Holy Month is for me used to be the most exciting month in our church years back. Used to be. It's a month everybody looks forward to and they will come invite their friends. So something is wrong somewhere for us to have relegated the place of family. One of our philosophies in this church is family and faith. So it's either we are lying about the things we push out as values or we're just ignorant about it or indifferent about people's families. I'm, I, I'm concerned about homes. I'm concerned about people's happiness and joy and family. And, and so we have to address these issues together, looking at the scriptures. So I'm going to ask us all to stand and sing that song, Lord, give us Christian homes. Do you have it? We're going to sing that hymn. It's a good hymn. Sing it with understanding. Then I'm going to preach a sermon. Then after that, I'm going to answer some questions. Usually our family month is a time to answer questions. And so we have six questions already sent to me. Today we are addressing singles. Next week we'll address couples. So couples questions will come next week. And you invite your friends. Invite many homes that are going through crisis. You'll be surprised that you might bring somebody here who's on the verge of running a divorce. And the word of the Lord will touch the person. You might save a home. You might just save a home. It's time for us to reach out to people. Stop being self selfish. Christianity is about touching lives. Do you have the lyrics? Can you sing it son? Go ahead. I want the lyrics projected if you can have it. For those that don't know about the song, go ahead. Yes Lord Jesus, help us. Homes where the Bible is loved and taught. Oh, yes. Church. 
The kingdom is an endangered species. I'll be speaking today on something that's really touched my heart and I'm very, very, very concerned. Very bothered. And I'm going to take my text from a very unusual text. Usually I will, still, I will read two passages. First Corinthians chapter 7 verse 1. Give it to me. That's my usual text when I want to explain marriages. Give us Christian homes. What if I'm single? Give us Christian relationships. So, I'm going to, so even if I'm single, my relationship can be a Christian relationship. So if there is a Christian home, there's a non-Christian home. And that's where we are today. We are in a point where we don't know how to discern a Christian home from a non-Christian home. Not all homes are Christian homes. Don't you ever be deceived? Not all marriages are Christian marriages. So give me 1 Corinthians Media chapter 7 verse number 1 and Galatians chapter, now, chapter 2 verse number 20. Now read with me. One to go. Okay, so the first part is what I want to explain. Now concerning the things you wrote to me, now we find a people or a church writing and asking questions from a man, Apostle Paul. So the topic of my message today is who is your life coach? Now you see a people asking their coach, Paul, you're my coach. Can you please coach me how to win a marriage? They asked questions from a life coach. They saw Paul not just as a preacher to preach holiness. They opened their homes to Paul. Share your thoughts with me on marriage. Many of us say, no, no, no. For church, not just for prayer. Church is for prayer and deliverance, not for marriage. Who told you that? Christians will listen to a prayer with free marriage and not to pastors. That's the truth. Why? Because of Galatians 2.20. Give me Galatians 2.20. And I want you to underline a passage there. So I'm, I'm trying to pick scriptures for you so you can then mold your mind. I am crucified with Christ. Nevertheless, what? Watch this. Watch this. Yet not I. But Christ lives in me. How to change our lives. In Jesus name. Sit down. The phrase there is the life I now live in the flesh. Wow. I can write a book on that. The life I now live. Shh, shh, shh. Not the life I lived before. Now is different from before. I used to live like that. And now, now means presently live like this. Oh, you should get that. That means there is a former life and a present life. Am I communicating? English scholars, help me. Does that make sense? Former life, different from present life. The life I now live. That's why I use the word life coach. Who's a life coach? So please, quickly project for me my definition of life coach. Media, let me put that on the big screen. Life coach. Because all of us, pastors are life coaches. And people don't know that. And that passage must make sense for me. My own definition of a life coach is someone who helps people make progress in their what? In their lives through professional and career counseling sessions. So I will coach you how to make progress in your life. Professionally, career, and matrimonially. That's a life coach. I see many pastors say they're life coaches and there's nothing wrong with being a life coach. Is that clear? The only question is, which life are you coaching? The former life or the present life? No, but you get it. Which life? The life I now live. So because we keep forgetting that. We follow secular life coaches who coach us how to live life, secular life. And we bring it to church. What is the problem? Which life? Life coach, which life? So, the life I now live. The life I now live. Take it away. Now, give me the second definition of um, marriage and relationship counselor. Because I, I wrote three here. Because I'm going somewhere. Because I'm a marriage counselor. 
this morning a life coach is speaking to you. I'm also a pastor. But see me today as a life coach. Because Apostle Paul was addressed as a life coach. They told him, please ignore this. It's, it's giving me wahala. Take it away. I'll read it myself. Take it away. Don't let it create curses for my eyes. <laughs> Give my blue. Apostle Paul was seen as a life coach. And so when they wrote to him, he said, okay, concerning the things you wrote to me about, marriage, let me share my thoughts with you. As I share my thoughts with you, because don't forget, we are new creation in Christ. We are different from them. Because the problem with church today, modern day church, modern day church, is we are denying who we are. We are saying there's no Christian life anymore. We are saying ignore the Bible. We're listening to secular life coaches and I hear foolish, ignorant preachers go to the pulpit and discuss things outside scriptures, outside the Bible. And you want to raise spiritual men using secular codes? It won't work. So when you now see the outcome, you get angry. No, it's what you fed them with that they cough out. Paul said, concerning the things you wrote to me, let me share my thoughts with you. Now, this is me saying this, not God. This is God saying this, not me. He had to distinguish and differentiate what he was saying. Read 1 Corinthians 7. He said, I know I have the Spirit of God. The problem I have, I have, is I don't even know which life I'm talking to. Because many people sit in church still living in the former life. Not the life I now live. So, I don't even get my point. So, I, I, I'm, so, when I say I'm a life coach, which life am I coaching? New life. Hey, hey, you are getting my point. So, it's this life I'm talking about. Not that life. So, when I'm coaching you, I'm coaching you in this, uh, the life I now, in the flesh, oh, not in the spirit, I'm in the flesh. Paul said the life I now live in the flesh, oh, flesh. I eat, I drink, I sleep. I watch TV. I go to bed. I go watch comedy. That life I live in the flesh, yo. Not be spirit. Flesh, yo. Flesh, yo. I will coach you how to live in the flesh and defeat the enemy and live happily married after. In the flesh, not in the spirit. The life I now live. The life I now live. I'm so angry that we are Christians when it suits us. We drop Christianity when we don't like it. Selective obedience. Partial obedience is still disobedience. We are so, so great in massaging the flesh. Crucify the flesh, not massage the flesh. It's only the church that knows how to massage the flesh. To make a flesh better. Refined flesh. Refined old man. No, no, no. no. Crucify the old man. Not take care of it. Make make it up. No, don't do make up for the old man. I, I told somebody to send me. I mean, Jide, what they said to me is not. I don't agree. I, tell, I said to him, I said, send me the most well-paid coaches to understand that some coaches are more experienced than others. Even in the secular place of work, even in football. Am I right? You pay a coach 30 million euro a year. Another coach is paid 5 million. Another coach is paid 100,000. Who can tell me why? Expense and uh, resulty, resulty. Any team this coach coaches, they win. My club now, we are crying every day. <laughs> Yesterday, after I watched a match, I prayed, Lord, let them suck him. For the last one month, I've been praying, Lord, touch to the belly. It's no money, sack this coach. Buy the best players in the world, put them under a bad coach. There'll be crisis in the marriage. A good coach, your marriage will be okay. Experienced coach, your marriage will be okay. That's why I'm of the opinion a two year old marriage man, pastor in a church of 1,000 on the island, well, it was one small church. I married two years ago and it's canceling marriage. Two years. You are two years. Honeymoon. Honeymoon counseling. <laughs> You 
you see Papa Debo in 60 years in marriage? Daddy, how did you do it? You ask them. You ask them. They will quote you. Ah, women. I hear a woman here shouting, men. <laughs> There's a man here shouting, men. <laughs> I said, women. Fella tried it. He said, yako wo, yako. Fella, they asked him after 27 marriage in Yoruba. He said, ah, igbe yawo. Yawo means, ya means pepe. I carry pepe. I saw pepe. Same day I married, same day I divorced 27. <laughs> not me, fella. Fella, the club of Gucci, not me. Because my own yawo is not yawo. Women, men, men. You saw them there. Okuni. They even crafty men has come. Am I right? Is it women or men that has come? Yeah. Women. Yeah. Men. Can you imagine human beings calling men's come? <laughs> so so they, God will forgive them. So they told me here, they said, Dear God, Simeon, I don't believe they go Simeon, he ends one and pep. Is it true? He ends one and pep. For doing what? For coaching. Life coach. For doing what? 49 million. I want to go and learn coaching. Look, today I must have a part-time job. Please, what's late? It's a profession. And it's not late. Did they help me enroll for coaching classes? Eh? 49 million? Ah, I will coach you. I will coach. I will tell Super Ego. And also Super Ego. I hope they can win. If the goes don't fly, I will resign one day. <laughs> coach. Ask your neighbor, say, who's your life coach? Be careful in choosing one. If you want to win, make sure, no matter how good a player he is, under a bad coach, you look like a terrible person. Good players become great players under good coaches. Choose your coach well. Because we all coach, we all have coaches. Paul was a coach. The church wrote to Paul, coach us, tell us, train us, advise us, tell us what to do, when to, how to train, how to be disciplined. Who's your life coach? Life is a serious thing. You have a bad coach, you will ruin your life. Some of you have been coached by that entity called social media. Oh, ah, young people. That's our coach. And that's a place where you have a plethora of ideas, all kinds of advices. Social media coaching you how to manage a marriage. No wonder you have a headache. You're not blaming God. You're blaming God. Who's your coach? Because the life I now live. The first thing is we must all agree oh, that there's that life and there's this life. When God created Adam, he put him in a garden. So the garden life, shh, shh, had garden rules. I'm going somewhere. When Adam messed up, he put him in the ground. The ground life have ground rules. The ground rules here are different from the garden rules. The, the garden rule is a Christian rule. This is a Christian life. That's a former life I used to live. This is my new life. In this new life, I live in the flesh. I must understand the rules of this game. A good coach will tell me the rules of this game. So in, in, in this place, different rules. In that place, different rules. In this place, where I come from, where I come from, where I come from, man can marry three, four wives. In this place, man is allowed to cheat. In this place, woman of a questioner. In this place, woman feed a lie. Collect money for husband. Put them for something else. In this place, in this rule, the rules here. But, 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 the, the life I now live, oh God help me, in the flesh, the life I now live, the life I now live, this new life has new rules. This new life has new rules. Can we abide by the rules? You can select and pick and choose. The life I now live in the flesh. I live by the faith of the Son of God. So you must tell me who loves me. Tell me what are your rules for marriage. So I can know how to manage my marriage. Because these rules are different from those rules. Am I right? Oh, am I right? In, in, in that rule, in this rule, don't let me go there. I'll go there. In this rule, here, yeah, ground rules. A man and a woman. The question is there can cohabit and live together. There's nothing called premarital sex. 
Those rules are different. The rules in the garden is different from the rules in this ground. So the question is, which life are you living? I know by the rules you obey. You only come to God when you need deliverance. You don't go to God when you need to say, let me just abide and obey you in simple rules. And the secular world, the world teaches us what to do. And this, we use these rules. We live in the garden, but we use these rules to live in that place. Do you get the point? Oh, are you with me? We're using the rules here. The world. Live here. It can't work. It can't work. Like my Ghanaian brother said, it can't work. It won't work. To use those rules to live here? No, no, no. I challenge you. Go to America and use Nigerian rules. They will jail you. Do one way, they will arrest you. Ah, no, no, no. They will tell you, that's Nigeria. This is America. It won't work. Two different rules. Don't say, no, I'll be Nigeria. I go go there. I go live Nigeria and there. Okay, there's something you can do there in your bedroom, but outside, it's only in that place. Wife will call police. Police will call wife. Oh, husband, come over your house. Now your house, oh. Now your house, oh. Boy, I go call police. Hello, 911. Yes, this man is abusing me. I feel violated. Please come over. And my life is in danger. The police is not meant to ask questions. They go, uncle, come and come out. Now my house, I beg, come out. Can that rule work here? <laughs> but who can tell me about 911 code? Do we have 911? We don't even have 911. Uh, we don't even, I don't even know the emergency number for Nigeria. What is it? 112223? I don't even know. From, somebody said 419. <laughs> One night, please die for one night. Maybe they will pick it. Mm. 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 Which rules are you using? Where are you living? So, the question is the place I'm living is more important than the rules of because I've looked at it. The Christian life is sit about a place 15. Quickly, project for me John 15. These things have I commanded you, love one another. The next passage. If the world hates you, you know that he hated me first before he hates you. Sorry, who is this world? A system, not a person. A system. And that's the problem. The world hates us. And you don't know the world hates us. As I'm preaching now, some people hate what I'm preaching. When I say wife, submit us, and they hate it. It's a system. If I post it on social media, they will put me down. A system hates it. They, and you don't understand it's a system. It's not a person. It's a system. Unfortunately, those some of us here are becoming part of that system. And you are in the church, but you are in the system. And you don't know it's a system. That system is so forceful, so aggressive, so anti-God and anti-Christ. Yes. And you don't know it. And you are part of that system. Pushing the ideology of that system. He said, if the world hates you, they hate me first. Look at the next verse. Next verse. If you are of the world, ah, is that in your Bible? If you are of the world, is that in your Bible? That means you are not of the world. See, this life and that life again. If you were of the world, the world will love its own. So you see, that passage tells us there is a world, there is those that are not in the world. I, 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 I met this thing here before I was born, it was there. But because you are not of the world, they hate you. They hate us. They hate us. They hate us. And we want to be loved by those that hate us. So what do we do? We shift grounds. We move from that ground to this ground. That's a problem because we want to be loved and accepted and be popular and grow our church and grow our system. We want to be accepted. So we don't mind changing and shifting grounds. Just to be loved. Don't be loved. You, tell, you can't preach that, Pastor. They put, they put me under pressure to tell me what you can't preach. You can't preach, you, sir. You can't preach. If you preach, they won't love you. I went to London to preach in a church many years ago. I preached on something small like this. The pastor came and said, Sir, you've created crashes for me. I won't invite you anymore. My friend, I said, Well, well, 
I'm sorry, oh, but no invite me again. I told him, only for me to find out later that it was homosexual. I didn't know he was homosexual. He told me I won't invite you anymore. I said, oh, well, no problem. Only for me to find out later he was homosexual. So they tell me what to preach, not the Holy Ghost. I have to hear you, not hear him. So which world am I living? The life I now live, that's even the very extreme. Let's even go to the normal one. Feminism. They have attacked the church. Feminists have attacked us. They choke us. They choke us. I told a young lady who came to our church many years ago. Somebody referred her to me. She had two years marriage, was in crisis, left her husband. And I said, she came, she liked the church. She was sitting at the back there. She said, okay, come. I had the first session, second session, third session. By the third session, I went to visit her home. Can I meet your husband? No, you can't meet your husband. Can I? He can't help. I've increased. But I don't want tithe. I want your heart for Jesus. I want your heart. She stopped coming. She stopped calling. Because she said, no, don't talk to him. Can I just hear? I'm not saying, this. can I just even hear from inside? She refused. If you cannot accept and preach divorce publicly, your pulpit will not come to your church. We'll, call, we'll, we'll tag you old school. We'll tag you ultra conservative pastor. And we'll label you. People will stop coming to your church because you are ultra conservative. You're not moving with the times. You have to know the times have changed. The current time is, so you have to preach a different message. Has God changed? I don't know, maybe God has changed you. Just maybe. Maybe God has changed. What's the, the, we're, 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 in a, we're in a very big mess. We're in trouble. It's there very clearly. John 17, verse 14 to 16. The same concept of preaching the word, being different from us. John 17, 14 to 16. The same concept. Christ was preaching it. That we are different from them. But we don't want to agree that we're different from them. Give me John 17, 14 quickly so you can see that the, the thought I'm saying is that I have given them the, thy word and the world. Why? 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 Mm -mm. Yes, because they're of the world, even as I'm not of the world. But why do they hate us? The word. Uh, you didn't see the answer. I have given them your word and the world hates them. The anti-church movement is anti-Bible movement. It's the Bible they are attacking. You don't know. Everything the Bible says, let's attack it. Why should the man be the head of a home? Why? Let's attack it. Why you go? Why? Because the Bible says so. I've given them your word and the world hates them because of your and you don't know it. And we're not discerning that it's the word they're attacking. Matthew 13. Parable of the sower. The first thing was that when the seed falls on the wayside, the fowls of the air comes to pick it up. I want to attack the word. They didn't attack the soil. It's the word. Take the word out of the heart. Take the word out. Attack the word. Because the word is the secret of transformation. You take in the word, your life will be transformed. So in place of the word, Let's give them new philosophies, new ideologies to against the word so that they can then begin to push those the doctrine. The difference is that I will, I will transform myself to be so humane with good words, charity. I will say, I love children, child abuse. Spare the rod, spoil the child. If you spank your child, they say you have abused your child. But the children can insult the parents. Mommy, don't be stupid. There's no parental abuse. Your body, oh, no parental abuse. I, I don't understand the insanity in the West. A child, have you seen movies the way the children speak to their parents? I don't know. Say, come here, darling. Say, no, no, mom, 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 excuse me, mom. Leave me alone, mom. Go, 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 I'm not talking to you. In the same house, 14 year olds, 13 year olds, normally every day, he manages at home. 14 year old in Africa. Say, a dirty, a go, down. My popsy will give me a call. You will say, you, after he gives you a knock, you say, thank you. You have to say thank you for knocking your head. Bow, bow, 
Ah, what do you say? <laughs> I love other guys. One friend for two, I didn't die you. We didn't die. Look at us today. Nobody happened to us. They say just abuse. Nobody abused me. Nobody abused me. My father tied my hands, beat me well, well. I came back to my senses. He didn't abuse me. Call you, leave me alone. They, they aligned me. I didn't die. Look at me today, preaching. Uh, they don't say, oh, you damage them psychologically. That's why they are serial killers. You find out people that are rapists, they were damaged psychologically when they were age two, three, four. What happened to you? When you were three, did your mama touch you? Did your papa touch you? This kid, Ironi. 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 Nonsense. Nothing happened to us. <laughs> I'm angry with all these philosophies flying everywhere. That's why Christians attend therapy sessions more than counseling sessions. And you're born again, Christian. And you see pastors here that can cancel you. You won't go for counseling, you go for therapy. Do you get my point? What are you telling you? They're therapists. Well, they are fixing my mind. I have mental health issues. <laughs> Is she weary? You have mental health issues. Are you mad? No, I'm not insane, but I have mental health issues. So they are going to therapy to fix my mind. Like a mechanic will fix a car engine. So they will fix my mind for me. Let me lay hands. Kayama debo jakata. Heke tusate. Lay hands, lay legs. Cast out devils. Give you Bible, raw Bible counseling session. You will see how your life will be different in two years. You will be transformed totally. We didn't go for therapy sessions and we are here today. We went for counseling sessions. Marriage counseling, pastoral counseling. They counseled us using the word. But I have given them your word. The world hates them. Because the word is truth. The word will tell you the truth. Husband, how dare you do that to your wife? It's wrong. You cannot touch her. It's wrong. The Bible says, husband, love your wife. If you love her, you won't beat her. You are wrong. That's what the Bible says. You don't need any therapy session for that one. Wife, submit to your husband. That's all. And you have a good home. And I want to go for a counseling therapy session. Good luck. And good luck. That means what I would say is what? Good luck. Hmm, Jonathan, no, but good luck. <laughs> First Peter, give me that John, John 17. Are you enjoying this? If I don't enjoy it, I'll keep preaching it. <laughs> I'll keep preaching it. John 17. Eh? Look at look at next verse, verse 15. I pray not that you should take them from the world, but that what? You should keep them from what? Which evil? In the world. These ideas are evil ideas. But we don't see them as evil. Evil means devilish, satanically inspired ideas, anti-God ideas, anti-Christ ideas. There are many anti-Christ out there. In next, look at next verse. Next verse. Next verse. Next verse. I want to read the questions out now because my time is up. They are, of, they are not of the world though. Even as I am not of the world. Don't you ever forget that scripture. We are not of the world. First Peter 4 verse 2, 12. First Peter 2, 4 2. 1 Peter 4, 1 and 2 says, Harm yourself, since Christ has died for you in the flesh. Harm yourself. 1 Peter 4, verse 2. Give it to me. So that your life in the flesh, you see that he no longer should live the rest of his time in the flesh. How? After the loss of men. But to the will of God. That's Christianity. To live the rest of your time, your lifetime, in the flesh, after the will of God. So I may please God's will. So that, this is not very popular today. Not popular today. So let me address your questions quickly. So here today, you see a life coach addressing some questions. Is that okay? I'm a life coach. But which life? Eh? Aha. So as a life coach, I'm talking to you about the new life. Now if you come and meet me, say, sir, can you please coach me? Watch me, watch me. Coach me how to live this life well. Which one? The whole life. Oh, you are getting it. I don't have the skills or capacity. Football coach, 
and rugby at the tennis. I'm not, I can't, I can't go through there. My skills are to teach how to live here. Because in that place, go and meet another coach, Brian. Maybe you get some other secular work coach. He'll tell you once in a while, make sure you get off home, you unwind, you take some alcohol, you go on a vacation, have a nice escort to sleep with you. So, uh, they will coach you well there. But yeah, I cannot coach you there. Don't let your wife see your phones. You know, they will coach you here. Don't let your wife see your phones because if they see your phones, they will see the things you're going through. Make sure you have two, three secret accounts. The public account on your Facebook is one of the public Have another secret account with a pseudo name. That name will not be known to other men. They will coach you. They will coach you well to live well here. And, and, and you will live a very well worthy life and you defeat the enemy, which is yourself. But I, I, I don't have the skills to coach you in this area. Is that clear? My skills is that place. The new life. So we say, oh, is that coach? Is that coach? Let me coach you as a new life. So it's important for me to lay that foundation. Now the questions here. Are you ready? This is our style. I'll read questions, I will answer them. Sir, <clears throat> first one. I am 35 years old. I've been seeing this guy for three years now. Just last week. But I'm conflicted as whether to wait for him or try out other eggs in the basket. I don't know which basket. Do you think love is enough in this case? Do you understand it? Distance relationship. I'm in a relationship. My fiance traveled, left the country. Should I wait for him? This is a she asking the question. When a he is asking, it's a different ballgame. Because she's are usually better at being faithful than the he's. These he's, all of us, men, <laughs> cannot hold it together. With respect to faithfulness than the women. The women are wired. What? Well, old women. Wired. <laughs> Modern day women cheat more than men. I saw I heard. Old women are wired differently to be more faithful than the men. So I would suggest strongly if your parents are not aware, if you have introduced each other to your parents, so the parents are aware of the relationship, just waiting for the marriage. It's very dangerous for you as a lady in Nigeria to wait for the man who is in the UK, Jack Pine. So, eh, I was, don't, I was, don't go for therapy. Go for counseling session. <laughs> so I would not suggest you wait that long. I would suggest you get your parents and his parents involved, your pastor and his pastor involved. So everybody knows about that relationship. If everybody's aware, then it's a bit different. However, Let's look at what the Bible says about relationship and love. Love is what keeps relationships going. I'm going to give you an example. There's one relationship that I know of. For about 2,000 years, the man has left. He said he's coming back. And the bride is still waiting. Say it again. He will come. Jesus is coming. He's our groom. And so a few of us that don't believe he's coming back, we've got to look for other men. Backsliding. Some of us say, well, I'm going to wait. Some of Solomon also speaks about the man, the woman chasing her husband, saying, my husband has gone out. I'm waiting. He's going to come back. True love will always wait. Remember the parable of the ten virgins? It's about ten virgins waiting for the coming of their groom. And it came at midnight when they were not expecting. So love is worth waiting for. If you love the person, wait. If the person messes up, that's his business. Never blame yourself for doing what is right. I've told people this and this is a problem. Don't you ever in your life blame yourself for doing what is right. Even when once in a while you love the wrong person. And many of us have loved the wrong people. And we blame ourselves for loving. Loving is not wrong. It's a person that you love that is wrong. I will never blame Samson for loving Delilah. For what Samson did to Delilah, I did to my wife. And my wife has not disappointed or betrayed me. I've told my wife the secret of my strength. And she has not sold it for money. If I told a wrong woman, I'm gone. Does that make sense? It's called full disclosure. So one chance. If you tell your wife, if your wife tells you everything that is good about her, if you are in love, you will keep it. Love covers. Love does not uncover. Love will not disgrace. 
So the problem is we keep loving the wrong people and we keep blaming love. Put your hands together. If you love the right person, you will never blame love. So the problem is the person not love. Love never fails. It's the lover that fails. Or the love. It's, the best. it's not me. Love, love is the DNA of love. It won't fail. It's correct. At times, we mix likeness for love. And we mix lust for love. So then you've loved a person who didn't love you but lusted after you. You know, in crisis. So that's what we find out in counseling session through some signs of love and signs of lust. So if you've loved a person who only loved you for the wrong things, you're in trouble. Love is dependable. Love will not fail you. My time is up. Number second question. Because of the time, I will just rush it. My sir, my fiance who works in Abuja has just been transferred to Lagos. <coughs> Because I know the questions, I want to cough before I answer it. I need shelter. Dickness Margaret, please. For a few weeks. I live in a one bedroom self contained apartment. <coughs> we are both Christians and know that sex before marriage is a no no. <coughs> However, I also cannot leave him stranded. That would be very un Christian like. I like this person telling me what is unchristian. So the question is already leading me on. Why are you telling me it's unchristian to leave him standard? Though? Sir, is it a sin to give, him a to give him shelter? Sleep in the same room with him. Steal a few kisses. <laughs> but not have sex. We'll not have sex. Please, sir, don't judge me. I honestly want to know. Just for one month. In the shelter. After all, the Bible says, I was naked, did not clothe me. I was homeless, did not. Uh, uh, should we not provide shelter for the homeless? Can you tell me, Bible verse and scripture, where a homeless man is should... <laughs> almost falling down? <laughs> He's laughing, almost falling down. Actually, <laughs> You are not homeless. <laughs> At least actually is not homeless. We know he's not homeless. <laughs> the homeless that we love. So, 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 can I provide home for the homeless? <laughs> my, <laughs> my answer is no. Because flames, old flames, ah! Sexual urges, ah! If it's homeless, I, I watched a comedy yesterday. I was laughing on my bed when I watched it. The man went to a church and said, I'm homeless. And they found in the Bible that they said, Surely goodness and mercy shall follow me all the days of my life. And I will dwell in the house of the Lord. Now, the Pastor, I want to be sleeping in a church. <laughs> that God said, I should come to the house of God. I'm homeless. The pastor said, No, this is not God's house. <laughs> this, is, this is God's in law's house. <laughs> That heaven is God's house. That there is a in law of God. That is what I was just laughing. That is God's in law. That owns this house. Go to heaven. Heaven is God's house. <laughs> Praise God. So, so for the homeless, when we create the place for them in church, hmm? eh? for one month, or you have a cousin, a sister, a nephew, a brother in church, a bar. Don't accommodate a brother in one room apartment on the same bed. So still a few kisses for one month. Abba, Abba, Abba. The answer is what? No. Can I have you shout it? No. Even if you are doing it, can I have you shout it? No. <laughs> Say the right thing, even if you are not doing it. The answer is what? No. The church is against cohabiting, even when you're in courtship. Living lovers is an alien idea. I see many Jamas kids and they see people that are not married living together. It is not godly. That's what I say about this world and that world. That's what I be saying. People don't like it when we say the world hates us when we say so. In fact, a church even coined a scripture to support it. Now, once you are engaged, you can live together. And they go to church together every Sunday. They're not married. They go from the same house to church. From church, they go home, they cook. They're not married. And the church is aware. And they, they, 
kind of Christianity? I don't know. I don't know. Leaders. You know this modern day church is everywhere. Destroyed everything for us. As if we don't know the Bible anymore. What? Are you married? No, we're not married. Why? The Bible says if your flower of your age is a gynecological gynecological, we're engaged, we're going to marry, you, are, you can be together. Eh. So can you please help me define what the Bible calls fornication? It's for those who are not in relationship. The moment you're in relationship, you cannot fornicate. When you're not in relationship, Christian relationship, then you're not fornicating. What you're doing is just preparing yourself for marriage. Mercy, Lord. <laughs> Tell us, keep mercy, Lord. It's mercy. That's the new definition of fornication. A pastor preacher won't say in Enugu. The new definition of fornication is when you're not engaged. Christians that are engaged cannot fornicate. No married though cannot fornicate. Ah. Because you know of enough. <laughs> because I don't know where we are going. I don't know where we are going anymore. I don't know. Me, my style is this. Eh, my style is this. Look at me. Shh, shh. Sin is sin. I'm not perfect. I have my struggles. I have my issues. But one thing I told God I will do till I die is preach this thing as it is. Even when it hurts me, I will preach it. That's the truth. Not that you are better than them. Nobody is better. But we must say what God says is right and wrong. That's all. When it pains me, I take it too. But to say because I'm doing it, I won't preach it. Uh, it's wrong. Is that clear? Number three. Sir, I'm dating a guy. Another one. Oh, these things, there's so many. I'll jump this one. Long distance relationship. Our major code mode of communication is video calls. We talk for hours on ending every day. He gets very angry whenever I have to do something else other than talk to him. I know he's not healthy, but I can't leave because I have invested so much time into this. The part of me that scares me is whenever I say I'm going to church, he gets very angry and won't talk to me for days. Sometimes when we fight, it sends me stinkers and also blocks me on social media handles. I don't know for certain, but I feel this is a bit extreme, especially because we are not married yet. How do I undo this, sir? Eh? Pastor Grace, break it up, break it up. <laughs> Can you see a coach? Can you see a coach? Coach, what do I do? Break it up. That coach says, break it up, break it up. Eh? Jackpot. Jackpot in the relationship. To Japa. So the whole church is asking, it's not me. Should she stay or break it off? Should she coach, coach, all coaches, should she break it off? Can we can we pray about the brother to become saved? Can we open <laughs> Dr. Let's look at me? Pray for her. <laughs> can we trust God that trust and obey? For there's no other way. Maybe she will be saved. I think it's very dangerous if you are in this world and is in that world. Depends on where unequally yoked. Depends on where your faith lies in your order of importance. If faith is premium and he doesn't like you going to church, it speaks volumes about his values. It speaks volumes about his character. For me, that's a major red flag. That this is who I am. And you don't like me because my faith defines me. I would walk away. I would not even marry a person that does not like faith anyway. I won't even be in a relationship with someone who's not in faith. Because that person does not strike me as a person in faith, but religious. But not in faith. I probably honestly will walk away. I'll walk away. So break it off. Number four. Sir, I saw Francis' comment on a post on IG that read, what do ladies really bring to the table? I'm looking at which Sir, you cannot believe what this comment was. It read, valid question. Uh -uh. Sir, how can I marry a man that is saying such? So? Okay, this lady, a woman, saw a fiance's comment on a post on IG. What do ladies bring to the table? So the man said, valid comment. So she's now saying, eh? You are asking that kind of valid question? Can I marry you? Am I supposed to bring money to the table like a man? I'm a lady, and I thought I should be enough at the table. I 
don't think I should continue this relationship anymore, sir. What do you think, sir? So she's saying, bringing myself to the table should be enough. Am I right? She's the table. She should not bring anything to the table. Apart from me being here, you should be glad. So, but the men are saying, you must bring something else to the... Do you know why the men are saying that? Men are saying, the women have been saying, from what I heard, that we are equal. You go to work, I go to work. So I can't do house chores anymore. We are equal. Our mothers were stupid. We are smarter. Okay, so men are saying, hey, okay, you two, what are you bringing to the table? That's what gave back to this. What are you bringing to the table? If you say we are equal, then let us also be equal in other areas. Finance, yeah, 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 yeah. But to say I should be paying all the bills, and then you are saying we are equal. Abba. Do, do you see the genesis of this? Uh, what are you bringing to the table? This table will break, oh. <laughs> this table will break. <laughs> this table will break. Because <laughs> she will stand on the table. He will stand and they will break the table. Abba, what are you bringing to the... <laughs> ah, so, a coach is talking now. On this, uh, from this world. From this world. I do not agree with that equality ideology. Is on Christian in this scripture. Scripture wives are not equal to their husband in marriage. In place of work, oh, there's equality for women, there's gender equality in marriage. In marriage, there's no gender equality in my Bible. Oh, man, it is the head of a marriage. My Bible, oh, if you don't like it. That's your bloody business. My own Bible tells me I'm not disputing in your office, in politics, in sports, in marriage. Man order is the head of a home. Woman to submit. However, I am against gender violence. You cannot beat as a head. Kind of violent, brutalized, that is inhuman, unchristian, without your faith in the first place. So, what are you bringing to the table? I don't know which table you are discussing. But no, in marriage, all, both of us, everything I have, everything belongs to her. Everything she's got belongs to me. We are one. There's nothing like, uh, you bring small, I bring small. So if I bring small, that means that small is your own. It's a dangerous teaching. They say, what are you bringing? Mean that you can keep some, bring some. That's what I say. There's nothing I'm bringing. Everything you are is mine. Everything I am is yours. Everything the man has is woman's. Everything the woman has. What are you telling me that? Eh? No, I'm money, my money, my money, I'm money. Which money? You are dividing the marriage. Two shall become one, including money. How come your one is not money included? Uh, two shall become one. Only money, you can't become one. <laughs> do, do you get my point? Just I say, you will not like it. I have given them your word. The world hates them. That's the summary. You hate it. Because that's what the world says. So you better marry a man who understands that and a woman who understands that. My own wife and I, we have never discussed what are you bringing to the... Hey, because there was no table to share from. No, you get everything we bought uh, belong to because eh, 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 this world is like, we're different. As I say, the life I now live, let us define this life again. Well, I'm not saying they don't discuss it out there. That is the world. They discuss it there. No problem. But don't bring this conversation here. Because we are different. That is a major problem in the church today. We forget that we are in the different this life I now live is different from the one I used to live. That's the problem. Number five. My girlfriend earns more than me. Mm -hmm. Girlfriend, I'm not married yet. What are you looking at money? Can you imagine? They're not married though. Already she's eyeing the money she's earning. She's married. And it's not that I don't mean well for her. But I correctly feel emasculated. I am the man. <laughs> I should earn more. I should provide for her. But Nigeria keeps showing itself in my life. <laughs> oh, oh, uh, 
They won't kill this Nigeria. Say Nigeria kill 27. Nigeria kill 27. Nigeria. Okay. I'm not sure I can do this anymore. But I would break a heart if I leave. How do you suggest I deal with this? Honestly, there's no problem here. Why? Why? The woman is not complaining. She's not complaining. You have complex. She hands more than you. She's not intimidating you. She's not harassing you. She's not disturbing you. You are the one saying you are emasculated. You are... <laughs> this is what you're saying. You are suffocated. You are intimidated. They say you want to leave. <laughs> so, so I, I don't say, don't leave. Why don't you leave? You should leave. <laughs> People are saying you should leave. Can you see? Different coaches. I told you. There are many coaches. Oh. They are paying $100,000 a year. I am paying $200,000 a year. Any coach I said, you don't, you don't, don't, don't leave yet. They say, leave now, leave now, leave now. Because you are seeing that tomorrow she will have, you will have a problem. Am I right? You think that the man will have complex issues in that marriage. Am I right? Am I right? So you are already telling me, sir, if this man does not leave now, ha! Everything that woman does in the future, you will say, is it because you are making more money? <laughs> Am I right? Can you see? These coaches have been trained well. Clap yourself, coaches. The reason I said he shouldn't live yet is he must discuss this, like you said, doing now with pastors and counselors to evaluate his state of mind and his approach. Because he may have been battered by some other people about money. The role money plays in relationships. And maybe there's something the one is doing that's making him feel that intimidated and uncomfortable. Let's discuss it more in detail, deeper details. Don't just say flat, leave, leave, leave. Because whereas that means you are saying that money also plays a key role in making a man happy or a woman happy in marriage. It does, but love is more. Love is more. So I will not say you should leave immediately, but like he's asking me here, I will ask you to please take it easy. See a pastor for counseling. Discuss details. If she's not intimidating you, there's no problem why you're creating one. But if you know it's a problem to you that a woman should not earn more than a man, then that's why you say leave. If you want to earn more than the person you are going to marry, then look for someone who's earning 10000 a month and go and propose to her and, <laughs> and go make, and two shall be happy. Exactly. So go and find someone that can be, make you happy. You get it? So that's my own view. So please. But, but beyond that, if you know you can manage, why are you laughing? If you know you can manage the person that's earning more than you, then go ahead and marry. They're laughing. Oh God, help me. Let me leave them. Number six. Sir, I've always been hearing about full disclosure. This I'm going to round up here. Full disclosure. Are there things I should disclose and what I should not? For instance, my fiance is asking me for my body count. I didn't hear body count. I just learned it yesterday because I asked them, what's that? I didn't know to you. You are old school. They told me that body count. I didn't know that I'm a whole school person. They told me that body count means how many people have you slept with? They count the bodies. <laughs> you know, they educate me every day. Young people educate me. They can say you with that slogan. I say, what is body count? They say, men will ask a lady, how oh, now, I want to marry you. Give me your body count. She will say, well, just 15. Your uncle, 20, 28. <laughs> Number one, the fact that you are counting bodies means you have a problem. <laughs> so, 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 full disclosure. The, 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 uh, I did point again, you see? Full disclosure. Uh, uh, one more, one more, <laughs> one more, one more. Full, for instance, my fiance is asking me for a body count. How would that information help or advance our relationship? I'm confused at this point. I think it's just using this question to find a way out of our relationship. Also, about food education, I have a medical condition as a man that makes it difficult for me to be in a man, to be the man in my relationship in the other room. I don't know what to tell my fiance my, yet. What do you advise? To round up, but somebody says body count is a small problem. The Bible says, you see, like I can say to you, the life I now live in the flesh. In this place, all things are passed away. My philosophy, don't ask, don't tell. If asked, don't lie. That's my philosophy. Don't ask, don't tell. That's my philosophy. If asked, don't lie. 
That's my personal, my personal philosophy. Clap, clap, clap. My philosophy. Don't ask. They don't ask you. Don't tell anybody anything. If he asks you or she asks you, don't lie. If you lie, you have lied. Tell the truth and walk away. Hmm? Yes. Oh, the same thing. If a man is asking, the man should be willing to be answering. As you are asking, she to ask, you don't lie. That's why I do not, because all things are past. When I met my wife many years ago in Bible school, I determined I don't want to ask her about her old life. Because this life I now live in the flesh is the one I want to marry. That old one, if I get to know some things, I may be angry. And I told her, don't let us ask ourselves about the old thing. No. The only one I can tell you is medical condition, which is very important. Because medical is our life as well, even in the flesh. If you know you are barren, let me know now. If you know you're impotent, let me know now. So I can prayerfully say, I want to go ahead or not go ahead with an impotent man. Oh, what? Oh, why are they laughing? What we would like to laugh? You see, that's how I don't say the truth here. <laughs> oh, they like to laugh. Because some people can choose to go ahead with an impotent man. Because it's love. Love is dif difficult to love. You can't decode it. So let those medical issues are very serious issues. You can, so you can't hide a medical condition. I say, Reverend, don't ask, don't tell. And the man is trying to ask you to the defense you're not hearing. They're asking you're not hearing. They're asking you're not hearing. And of course, I don't want to tell. So for body count, it's an idea from here. Imported into that place. Throw it back, export it back. Back to the sender. Our life here, we do not care about body count. I don't want to know about body count because you're a new person, a virgin to me. From the day we met, you're a virgin. I'm marrying a virgin. So you can't tell me, no, 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 no. Hey, you are not, I don't know. But if you suspect anything, no, ask. You see your, I mean, one day, you know, my, my wife had a cousin. I didn't know they had, oh, they have many cousins. She was very close to this cousin, very close. Ah, I didn't know. The guy just came from the US. One day, they were just greeting each other at an event. Greeting and hugging and greeting and hugging. Ah, that lady through her long. You know, I was so, I'm confessing my sin. I was so uncomfortable. You know, you'll be eating here, but your eyes somewhere else. You almost put food in your nose. Ah. <laughs> so, and in the car, I was cold. She was only why am I cold? When we go to my, I say, ah, honey, this guy you are greeting and hugging, who is this person? I'm very bothered. Is there something you should tell me about your relationship with the person? She just started to laugh and laugh and laugh. I said, why are you laughing? I'm serious. I said, my cousin, Timmy. I said, is your cousin? Yes. <laughs> yes. <laughs> Praise God. Praise God. No, he not saying praise God. Praise God. Now cause you know. Now cause you know. Praise God. Because I was bothered. That one you can ask. Because if you didn't ask, I'll begin to live in suspicion. I'll begin to now go to friends and say, my wife is cheating on me. Unconfirmed. Unverified. Because I was I was bothered. I'd never met this cousin in my life. I didn't know. I wanted to ask because I knew you, you know so you know this one. Ah! I, I, I didn't. I asked. I asked. So if you will not ask that one. You start going to do sisters' gist, sisters' talk, say girls' talk. You start doing girls' talk. Hey, my husband do. My husband do. My hus girls' talk unconfirmed. You destroy your own marriage. Praise the Lord. I have many more questions, but I'm, all, I'm going to stop here today. I hope we have learned a few things today. Put your hands together for Jesus. Rise to your feet. Rise. I want us to pray for marriages and homes and pray for the believers out there. Next week, we'll be discussing couples. This is more of singles today. Next week is for couples. We'll discuss questions, issues about couples going through crisis. So we can address those issues. Invite your friends. Spend the next morning to pray for yourself. Pray for your own relationships. Pray for your homes. Pray for things happening around us. Ask God to help us. Pray. Just pray. Pray. And ask God to help us all. Ask him to help us. Ask him to build Christian homes here for us. Please jump up. In Jesus' name. Our Father, we thank you for that which you have told us today. We thank you for the way you have coached us. You are our coach, Holy Spirit. We choose to listen to you, not to the world. We pray you help us to build homes that will glorify you. In Jesus' name. Thank you, Daddy. In Jesus' mighty name, I pray. Put your hands together for Jesus. <laughs>